and welcome to Alistair lectures on electronics and optics. In this video and in my couple of following videos, I am going to demonstrate the working principle of surface plus one resonance, which are generally called SPRs. I will try to keep my explanation as simple as possible so that an undergraduate student can also grab the concept. But obviously, you must need some prerequisite. If you are an undergraduate student, you must have some knowledge regarding how the, an electromagnetic wave propagates, how losses take place and uh, how the electromagnetic power propagates and most importantly, the boundary conditions for the electric field, magnetic field and the conservation law of the propagation vector. There is very limited scope to discuss all of these concepts within this single video. For the basic concepts of electromagnetism, I will upload my video lectures later on. But right now, for the purpose of demonstrating the working principle of surface plus one resonance or SPR, I will just explain the most important concept uh, which is the boundary condition of electric field, magnetic field and the conservation law of propagating wave vector. I will explain these concepts based on a very simple example of a structure having two dielectric medium with one interface between them. While a TEM polarized wave incidence at the interface by making an angle with the surface normal. So let's start. So here is a first example of three dielectric medium making two interfaces between them while the medium N2, N2 is the refractive index of the sandwich medium uh, exists in between this medium N1 and N3. While the electromagnetic wave incidence from the material N1 and incidence normally to material N2 and finally passes through the N3. So there is a condition if the dimension of the sandwich layer is expressed in this particular format where N2 is related with the other two diffractive indices N1 and N3 in this manner, then the entire electromagnetic wave will be passed on to the third medium without having any reflection if the incident takes place normally on this particular interface. However, if the incident takes place with an angle, so there will be a, there will be a reflection. This is a particular structure. I have simulated this structure and I have explained the result in my previous videos. You can uh, go through that. This is one of the example of dielectric dielectric interface. So here, as per the definition of the refractive index, this is defined as the ratio of the velocity of the light in a free space divided by the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in a particular medium, where c naught is the velocity of light is expressed root over of one over mu naught and epsilon naught, where mu naught is the permeability of the free space or vacuum and epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space of vacuum. So Vi can be expressed in this way where this mu i and epsilon i, they are the permeability and the permittivity of the particular medium I'm concerning. So if you take the ratio of them, this n1 is coming as root over epsilon i times the mu i. Whatever I, I will discuss, I will concentrate my discussion for the non-magnetic materials for which this mu i is generally considered as 1. And eventually, the refractive index for a dielectric medium is reduced to root over of the permittivity of the particular medium. Now, this one is greater than 0. So, obviously, n1 is greater than 0 and you can confirm these things because the velocity of the light uh, in free space is always greater than zero and when the electromagnetic wave enters in a particular medium the velocity gets reduced so obviously this ratio always will be greater than zero and the refractive index is greater than zero and these things also you can confirm from this expression also however as you can see this is the another example of the dielectric dielectric interface where only two dielectric i have considered and here also for each dielectric the refractive index is greater than greater than zero now the electromagnetic wave incidence from the first medium and it enters into the second medium by making an angle theta i with the surface normal. So this is the propagation wave vector ki I have denoted and the electric field is obviously perpendicular to the direction of the propagation vector and the magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field and the propagation vector. So in this case the magnetic field will be if you draw a magnetic field over here so that will be for example in this way so that dot will be over there so this kind of magnetic field denotes that the direction of the magnetic field is towards us or uh, towards you why because if you place your uh, all of the fingers of your right hand along the electric field and without your thumb and if you curl all the finger towards the magnetic field your thumb will indicate the propagation of the wave, propagation of the wave so in this that's why the direction of the magnetic field will be towards us. And since the electric field is uh, not parallel to this interface, so it should have the two components because the electric field exists only within the incident plane. And what is the incident plane? Already I have discussed in the previous videos. The incident plane contains the 
uh, electric field vector or the magnetic field vector, the surface normal and the propagation vector. If the incident plane is containing the electric field vector, so that will be Tm or the transverse magnetic uh, polarization. Why? Because the magnetic field is perpendicular on the incident plane. So that's why it is called transverse magnetic polarization. Sometimes it is called the parallel polarization or P polarization because the electric field is parallel uh, on the incident plane. So that's why it is called this kind of TM polarization can also called the P polarization and if the electric field is perpendicular to the incident plane automatically your magnetic field will be aligned on the incident plane. So in that case that will be considered as TE polarization or S polarization. So however in this case we are concentrating on the TM polarization or P polarization that is a parallel polarization. Now as the electric field is not parallel to the interface so there are two components of the electric field that we can consider one is normal to this interface and another is a parallel to the interface. So if this angle is theta i you can derive that this angle will also be the theta i. When the incident wave is transmitted to the second medium and in this case I am considering the refractive index of the second medium is greater than the refractive index of the first medium so in that case the incident wave will be shifted towards the surface normal as we know from the snail's law. So the electric field in this case also will be perpendicular on the uh, propagation of the wave. And kT is the wave vector in the medium 2 and theta t is the angle that the transmitting wave is making with the surface normal. Here also the two components of the electric field on the transmitting side we can also draw where this angle will be theta t if this one is theta t. Now here comes the boundary condition of electric field and magnetic field. From this diagram as you know the incident wave vector ki is making an angle theta i with the surface normal. So obviously it should have two components along the vertical direction and along the normal direction. So along the vertical direction means along the uh, it will be parallel to the interface. So if this is ki so the this is called the tangential component which is the parallel to the interface the tangential component will be the magnitude of the ki times the sine theta on the incident side or the uh, within the medium one and in the transmitting side the tangential component of the transmitting wave vector should be kt times sin theta t. Now the tangential component of the electric field on both sides you can find that that will be the incident electric field this is the ei times cos theta i so that means this one and et on the second medium will be the transmitting electric field means this one times cos theta t so that means this component I am considering and they should be matched. On the other hand the magnetic field which are per perpendicular on the incident plane on the incident side and on the transmitting side. So in both of these cases the magnetic fields are automatically tangential to the interface because on the both side they are perpendicular to the incident plane. The boundary condition of the electric field states that the tangential component of the electric field they will be equal to each other. Tangential component of the magnetic field they also will be equal to each other and from the conservation law of the wave vector we can say that the tangential component of the wave vector they are also equal to each other. Whereas this ki the magnitude of the ki can be related as n1 times k0 where k0 is the wave vector in free space and n1 n1 is the refractive index of the medium 1 and in the second medium we can also define as n2 times k0 but this configuration is incorrect. Why? Because the reflected wave was not considered over there. So in order to match these uh, tangential components on both sides we must have to consider the reflected wave also. So here comes the reflected wave. Now the reflected wave is also making the same angle with the surface normal and this is the electric field and it also has the two components as the incident wave and all these things already I have discussed. So right now the total tangential component of the electric field in medium 1 will be equals to the total tangential component of the electric field in medium 2 and the total tangential component of the electric field will be what? The tangential component of the incident wave and the tangential component of the reflected wave where the theta i they will be common because they are getting reflected in the same angle at which the wave gets incident over there. So now we can match them. On the other hand 
the magnetic field the total mag tangential component of the magnetic field on medium one will be equal to the tangential component of the magnetic field in medium two now as i told how to understand the direction of the magnetic field just place your uh, fingers of your right hand along the electric field and curl them towards the magnetic field your thumb will indicate the uh, direction of the wave so for the incident wave the magnetic field is directed towards us but for the reflected wave the magnetic field must have directed in opposite direction so that if you place uh, the finger of your right hand along the electric field and if you curl towards the magnetic field so your thumb will indicate the reflected wave so in this case the magnetic field is directed into the page or into the screen so that's why the total tangential component of the magnetic field is the incident magnetic field minus the reflected magnetic field but in case of magnetic field we do not need to consider any sin theta cos theta component because the magnetic field for the incident wave and the reflected wave and the transmitted wave all of them are perpendicular on the skin either towards us or towards the skin whatever it is perpendicular on the skin automatically uh, all the magnetic field are tangential with respect to the interface from the conservation law of tangential component of the wave vector we can write that kti will be equals to ktt so on the both side and you can place that mod ki sin theta i will be equals to mod kt mod kt sin theta t and if i replace the value of kt and ki will end up with this equation and which is a uh, famous Snell's law. So Snell's law is basically the law coming from the conservation of the uh, wave vector. For the electric field also, the, all the tangential component on medium 1 will be equal to all the tangential component uh, on the medium 2. So from there we can equate them in this fashion. And for the magnetic field also, they are also will be the tangential component, they are also will be continuous. So we can end up with this equation. We know that the electric field and magnetic field, they are related with each other using the intrinsic impedance. And intrinsic impedance can also be finally related with the refractive index. So finally, we can write the incident magnetic field is equal to the refractive index times the incident electric field. Similarly, the reflected magnetic field is equal to the refractive index times the reflected electric field. So in general, magnetic field can be expressed as the refractive index times of the electric field. So here I am taking the ratio of reflected electric field to the incident electric field and that I have denoted as the gamma tm or the reflection coefficient for tm polarization and similarly if i take the ratio of the transmitted electric field to the incident electric field so that defines the transmission coefficient for the tm polarization from the expression we have obtained that means this equation and this equation if you keep this equation as e, ei er and et we have three unknowns but if i take the ratio we have two unknowns with two equations so obviously we can solve our reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient because practically we are much more interested in reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient instead of the individual components or individual value of the uh, electric field components so if i replace this ei and er over there finally by solving these simultaneous equations we can get the transmission coefficient can be expressed in this way whereas the reflection coefficient can be expressed in this way and since this is a TM polarization, the, the transmission coefficient is having a negative sign at the numerator. So you can relate this transmission coefficient to be zero and you can calculate at what angle the transmission coefficient will be zero for a given combination of N1 and N2. And that will be your Brewster's angle. And I have already simulated the Brewster's angle in my previous lots of videos. Uh, but for now, I'm not demonstrating the Brewster's angle. I'm going to give you the uh, brief flavor of the dielectric metal interface which is the fundamental building block of the SPR or surface plasmon resonance. The same diagram I have copied from dielectric dielectric interface but now the second medium is a metal. Why? Because the epsilon 2 which is the permittivity of the second medium is negative for a certain range of the frequency and obviously it is frequency dependent. In this case a dielectric medium generally we consider it is frequency independent and it is greater than 1 for most of the operating frequencies but this is not the case for the metal n1 which is defined as root over of epsilon 1 obviously that is greater than 1 but what about n2 n2 is root over of this epsilon 2 which is less than 1 for a range of frequency is that means the refractive index will be imaginary or complex form so we'll figure it out in my next video so if you are interested to know what will happen if i place a metal along with the dielectric medium stick to my channel until then thank you very much